Hi, I'm Jeff Lutz. I'm a postdoc at UC Irvine, and this is some work that I did with collaborators at Princeton. In particular, uh, Vinicius was very involved in this work. Uh, so basically the goal was that we wanted to understand how drag influences the uh, nonlinear evolution of an instability when you have a large effective scattering, which is a common tokamak regime. Um, we became interested because actually the role of drag in determining if a mode chirps or doesn't has been explored quite a bit recently, um, but the role of drag in the steady state solutions hasn't really been studied, so we wanted to study this. Uh, so basically, we're going to study the 1D bump on tail problem uh, by st starting with the Vlasov equation for the mode amplitude and uh, particle distribution f. Um, so our collision operator has both diffusive collisions uh, scattering, which is characterized by nu, and also has convective drag characterized by alpha. Um, so the first thing that you can do to solve this equation is that you can make the approximation of the bounce frequency of resonant fast ions is much less than the scattering frequency. And so this is what Burke and Breisman did in 1996 in order to derive the cubic equation, which is here. And so this effectively decouples the evolution of the mode amplitude A from the perturbation F. And so this is great progress already, um, but this is still a very complicated equation that you have to solve on a computer. Um, so I'll point out that all of the collisional dynamics are contained within the kernel of the integral. And then these time delays within the mode amplitude um, are what makes this uh, such a difficult equation to make progress, analytic progress on. Um, but uh, we found that there's, an, there's one more approximation you can make um, that's pretty realistic and will simplify things substantially. And so this approximation is that in addition to assuming that the bounce frequency is much less than the scattering rate, uh, you can assume that the growth rate of the mode is much less than the scattering rate. And so why this is useful is because um, the ratio of nu to gamma shows up in the kernel of the integral, and then it makes the integral um, really peak around small values of z and x, such that you can ignore the time delays inside of the mode amplitude, pull those out, and then you get what we call the time local cubic equation, which is a nonlinear ODE that you can solve exactly. And so this is what we do all of our analysis on. And so, like I said, you can solve this ex uh, exactly. You can split up the complex mode amplitude A into a magnitude and a phase, phi, and you can get a closed expression for both of these quantities. So you can see how the uh, saturation depends on alpha over nu, which I'll show on the next slide. And then there's a qualitatively new feature when you introduce drag, which is that you get a frequency shift. <clears throat> there's a, a linearly evolving phase um, at long times corresponding to a frequency shift that you only get if you have non-zero drag. And so as you can see uh, here for saturation and here for the frequency shift, both of these quantities um, are monotonically increasing with the ratio of drag to scattering, alpha over nu. Um, and it, the, uh, the changes due to drag become most significant when the amount of drag becomes kind of comparable to the amount of scattering that's in the problem. And uh, we confirmed these theoretical trends with 1D Vlasov simulations, and they agree pretty well. Uh, the only thing I'll say on this slide, I think it's really interesting, but um, basically the approximations that we made become more restrictive as the amount of uh, drag to scattering uh, becomes comparable. You can always satisfy the approximations, um, but it becomes more difficult. So up to this point, I've told you about the nonlinear evolution of the mode amplitude, um, but what about the distribution function? So under these exact same approximations, you can get the evolution equation for delta F, uh, the spatially averaged delta f, and you find that it satisfies a quasi-linear diffusion equation, which is really interesting um, because we didn't have to make any new approximations. It just the nonlinear theory reduces to a quasi-linear theory when you make these two approximations. I'll draw your attention especially to this script R, which we call the resonance function, which characterizes the strength of the wave-particle interaction in velocity space. And so just to give you a flavor of uh, what this is, if you have no collisions at all, then it's just a delta function. It enforces the resonance condition, omega minus kV equals zero. If you have some amount of scattering, then the resonance function will broaden, so you don't have to satisfy this condition exactly. But once you introduce drag, then in addition to the broadening, you get a shift of the resonance function. So uh, the strongest interaction is no longer at omega minus kV equals zero. It's at omega minus kV equals something proportional to the amount of drag in your system. So this is a uh, due to the fact that drag has a preferred direction in velocity space, it drags things down. 
and so that breaks the symmetry and therefore it breaks the symmetry in the resonance function. Uh, this is an important quantity because it's an input into um, uh, quasi-linear codes, for instance for fast ion transport, and so we've calculated this self-consistently um, in this more general form which in involves a collision operator that has both drag and scattering. Uh, maybe th this this is actually really interesting, but I don't think I can do it justice in um, a few moments. Um, but it's just more detail on how drag seems to be uh, non-linearly changing the resonance condition by a little bit. Uh, but the last thing that I'll highlight is that everything up to this point, we've assumed that the amount of drag is less than the amount of scattering. That's because we uh, purposely wanted to study the steady state solutions, which require this. Um, but we can apply our formalism <clears throat> to also study the early phase of non-steady solutions when drag is larger than scattering. And what's interesting is that we find when, when the drag is much, much larger than the scattering, then the resonance function not only shifts more and more, but it also splits into having lots of peaks of comparable magnitude. So there's lots of distinct regions of velocity space where you have very strong wave particle interactions. Um, these triations are also passed on to the delta F that you get, and we confirm that in Vlasov simulations as well. So the open question in our mind, which we find interesting, is do these somehow set up the preferential conditions for chirping, for instance? Because we know that alpha much larger than nu is a situation where you don't have a steady state solution. Um, this isn't the final saturated delta F, but this is what happens in the early phase, and it's, it has some interesting qualitative features. But we don't, we don't know the answer to this yet. So you might be asking, what's kind of the upshot of this? Should I care about it? I think the main application right now is that we've calculated the resonance function uh, rigorously to involve drag and scattering. And this is necessary for reduced quasi-linear models that are under development for fast ion transport. In terms of would this ever affect something that we see in the experiment, um, I can just say that nothing jumps off the page right now. Like we haven't finished thinking about it, um, but there's no like huge effect that you should definitely see um, but this is definitely something that we want to explore further. So I think that's it in terms of highlighting the work. Obviously, there's a lot more details behind the scenes um, that I couldn't talk about in the six or seven minutes that I made in this video. Uh, but if you're interested, you know, please read through um, the whole presentation or come by and I'll walk you through it. We'll also have two uh, papers, I think, coming out or submitting soon. And so we should have preprints. If you want um, to have those when they're ready, please email me and I'll be happy to pass them on. Thanks for your attention.